Okay, we first need to talk about some definitions of some special types of quadrilaterals. I can never spell this word. A quadrilateral is just a four-sided figure. So to do the problem solving, we have to memorize, we have to know these properties and memorize them. I'm going to start with just the parallelogram. Okay, this is traditionally what people picture for parallelogram. Um, but if you know that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, the definition is that opposite sides are parallel. And that's pretty easy since it's right there in the name, right? So what would that look like if that information was given to you in a picture? Um, remember these arrows. We'll show you. So opposite sides are the ones across from each other. So these two will be parallel, and these two sides will be parallel. Okay? Now, there's four properties, though, that, that a parallelogram will have 100% of the time. One of them is that opposite sides are also congruent. So if you know something's a parallelogram, you know that this side will have the same measure as this side and that this side will have the same measure as this side. Those are opposites. Okay, so if you know something's a parallelogram, you'll also know that the opposite angles are congruent. Remember, congruent means the same. So this angle will be the same as this angle. And this angle will have the same measure as this angle. Okay, consecutive. Consecutive, remember, is next to. Okay, so if you know something's a parallelogram, you're going to know that consecutive angles are supplementary. And remember, supplementary meant that they added up to 180. So if you add the two consecutive angles, add them, you're going to get 180. So in the picture, what does that look like? Um, this angle right here and this angle, the ones next to. Okay, so there's one pair. So for example, let's say this angle was 92. Well, 180 minus 92, 88. So this parallelogram would have these two angles adding up to 180. It's going to be true about any pair that you pick of consecutive angles. So for example, these two add up to 180. Okay, these two add up to 180 and so forth. Okay, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the diagonals bisect each other. So that's a little weird. What does that mean? So a diagonal goes from a vertex to a non consecutive vertex. So there's one diagonal. So the diagonals bisect each other. So what happens is if I draw a second diagonal right now, I'm going to cut that first one in half. And because they bisect each other, that means that this one is also cutting this one in half. So these two lengths will have to be the same. Okay? Okay, so since this is a lot of memorization, I'm going to have you um, stop after parallelogram just with those five properties and work on practicing applying them. And it will help you memorize it. So if you go to page two right now, let me just show you a couple of these real quick. So turn in page two. If I can find a copy. Okay. So let's look at, for example, let's look at number one. Why not? Okay. So how do I use these properties? Again, if I'm told it's a parallelogram, I have to have those properties memorized, and hopefully I start thinking about those properties. Okay. When I'm problem solving, I'm going to look at what information they gave me. Here I've got a, a question mark right here. They're asking me for the measurement of angle F. Okay, well, I'm looking for an angle. So hopefully right now my brain is trying to recall or I'm getting out my property sheet. And I'm looking at, okay, what do I know about angles? Angles, 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 what do I know? Let's see. I've got two properties about angles. I've got that the opposite of these two. Opposite angles are congruent and consecutive angles are supplementary. So what did they give me? Let's see. Oh, okay. Well, I want this angle and I have this angle. And this angle is the opposite angle. So what do I know about opposite angles? That they are congruent. So if this is 146, this is 146. Okay, so that's how I'm going to be applying these properties. Now that one was pretty easy, so let's pick another one. Um, let's look at number nine. So 
Number nine, when I remember that when I see these, I'm looking for an equation, right? I want a relationship. And all our relationships tend to talk about two things that are equal to each other or that you know what they add up to. So let's look what the situation is here. So again, my problem solving, my what I'm thinking right now is I'm going to need an equation. I look, where is that um, that expression? Is it a side? Is it an angle? Okay, I know I'm dealing with the parallelogram again, so I'm thinking of those properties, and I'm thinking, okay, wait, these are on sides. The two pieces of information I have are on sides, and in fact, they're opposite sides. So what do I know about opposite sides? And you can look at your sheet. Eventually, hopefully, you memorize them. So opposite sides, well, they're parallel, but that doesn't help me math-wise. Opposite sides are congruent. Oh, congruent. What does that mean? Congruent means, if you needed to add that here, you should have equal, right? When I went over that one. Okay, so what I know about this side and this side is that they're congruent. They have the same measure. So the relationship is that 2x minus 5 is equal to 17. All right, I'm going to go... Do a little math here, a little algebra. Add 5 to both sides to get x, the x term alone. Okay. The opposite of multiplication is division. And I get 11. Um, the directions have asked me to solve for x, which technically I have done. But you guys know that I always check. So 2 times 11, 22 minus 5. I put it in my calculator and I get 17, which tells me that I did that right. Okay, so I would go and try the rest of the practice on page 2 before you continue with the list of properties.